Something I've seen classic fans bring up more than a couple of occasions is how my tentacle-headed homie here busted on the scene and knocked the gold off of Sonic's quills. I'll knock the piss out of you. Give me all your jewels, you peacock and gerbil. <laughs> now, I've already talked about why this happens. It's a standard gaming trope. It's a sequel, and we can't have you starting off as a golden god. I mean, Sonic Team could have probably gotten away with not even showing us this and have us recollect the emeralds. Goodness knows they do that in every other game in the franchise. But hey, it, it's a nice touch. It gives us some continuity from Sonic 2 and starts us off fresh. Again, we know why it happens, but the question fans have is, how did this happen? It's not just the fact that Knuckles knocked Sonic into a whole other primary color, it's the fact that he knocked him out of his supersonic form, which, uh, well, is supposed to be invincible. That'd be like having someone out of their mind f***ed up on bath salts coming at you to eat your face and you just straight up slap them into sobriety, like you're literally kicking them from the habit. No, not even that. It'd be like hopping in front of a train and being like, stop it. It's like walking into a hurricane and all of a sudden, I can see clearly now. You get it. Jumping in front of Supersonic while he's got the Nitro's boost held down should leave Knuckles as nothing more than a fine red mist. Instead, he knocks all of your pretty rocks to the ground and leaves your broke ass in the middle of the forest. Those dreadlocks ain't the only thing he's swinging around, damn boy. And yeah, fine, these are just sprites and they can really only give you a rudimentary idea of what's going on. Still, it's hard to interpret this as anything else. And it's not like Knuckles is naturally just as strong or stronger than Super Sonic. We see him get laid out by the plain old blue version at the end of the game. And nothing later in the series ever shows him pulling off something this powerful again. So what gives? This has to be just a stupid oversight, right? Well, I've got another theory. Step aside, Matthew Pathew, and let me show you how to do a proper Sonic theory. <laughs> Take that. I'm sure, I'm sure Game Theory and their 12 million subscribers are just going to be blown away. <clears throat> All right, so how did Knuckles pull this off? Well, the way I see it, the answer is pretty simple. Knuckles is the guardian of the Master Emerald. And it's easy to forget that's his day job as this series carries on. You can only call off six so many times, bud. You're walking straight into a write-up here. But why does this matter? Knuckles has been guarding the Master Emerald his entire life. He and his extinct clan are intrinsically tied to the Emerald. And the Chaos Emeralds are as well, as we learned during the story of Sonic Adventure. Now, going by that game, it looks like his clan ultimately had a bit more know-how when it comes to controlling the energy and spouting ridiculous nonsense that makes no sense. But clearly something has been passed down to our handsome boy, Knuckles. I mean, the guy can sense where the shadow pieces of the Emerald Rest no matter where they are in the world. And outside of Chaos, the water god that resides within the Master Emerald, Knuckles, as far as I know, is the only other one to shatter the Master Emerald when it was in danger of being stolen. Now look, I, like many of you, thought this was less of a Master Emerald and more of a Master Glass novelty you'd find in a knickknack store during this scene, but what if this was because Knuckles has the ability to disrupt the Chaos Energy? But it's not like he's the only one that can harness Chaos Energy, I mean, Sonic can do it just fine and quite possibly better than anybody else in his universe because this world. But who's to say that Sonic really had a handle on this power when he first blasted onto the beach of Angel Island? Remember, Sonic 3 takes place right after Sonic 2, and it's very likely that Sonic only very recently tapped into the power of the Chaos Emeralds for the first time during his second adventure. I mean, he didn't even realize there were seven of these things during the first game. The dude barely has a handle on these things, and still hyped on that power, takes it out for a joyride, wants to show off his cute new do, only to have all that glitter hit the forest floor with a well-timed echidna ball. And look, let's even take the adventure games out of this. The game alone backs up my point. Everything we need to back up my simple statement is right here in the game at the beginning and at the very end. At the start, the very first thing that happens is Knuckles smacking Supersonic silly, and the very last confrontation is Knuckles versus Super Mecha Sonic. I said it before, and let's say it one more time. Knuckles is the only character to take on an enemy in a super form in any of the classic Sonic games. What if he's the only one capable of taking out the robotic doppelganger when it wields all that energy? And yes, dweebs, I know you can hack Sonic into this fight, and he does just fine. And either way, you still have to wait for Mecha to dip back into the blue before you can do any damage. But dig deeper than the sprites and think about what this fight represents. Everything has come full circle for Knuckles. He survives an onslaught from a death machine powered by chaos energy and strikes in the moments it's vulnerable. Is it so much of a stretch to imagine that he could blindside Sonic at just the right moment and disrupt his super form? I mean, maybe we've been looking at this the wrong way. Maybe it's not a matter of brute strength, but a matter of precision.
I'm really tired of this characterization of Knuckles through the games. Yeah, he can be a bit naive, but Knuckles isn't an idiot. He's lived an isolated life and doesn't really know a whole lot about the outside world. But when it comes to his island, well, he knows everything about it. His entire purpose, his whole existence, and as we would find out later, his whole lineage, all centers around the Master Emerald. It's really not that much of a stretch to imagine that he could smack that unwieldy weapon out of the hands of an impatient hedgehog, or survive an attack from his robotic double. That's why I keep saying this is Knuckles' story. Even when things head off to the Death Egg, chronologically, the adventure ends with our radical Red Anteater. Knuckles redeems his mistakes and defeats, proves his worth as a guardian, and going by this logic, even makes sense of that instigating smack to Sonic's superpowered face, all in this showdown with Mecha Sonic. And you know what, maybe I'm digging too deep, maybe it's all headcanon, but you really could not tie this together more perfectly. And again, I'm only really operating during the time frame of this and the next few years when the adventure games came out. I'm not pulling anything from the comics or later games or anything else really. So if there's anything else out there that contradicts this, well, I, I don't care. All I'm saying is Sonic 3 & Knuckles makes sense of this within the game itself, as long as you're paying attention. Or again, maybe I'm looking way too deep into a 25 year old game about Rainbow Rap Boys. But hey, that's just an apology. A game apology. I'm sorry you saw that. I'm also very sorry for that joke. I feel like every gaming channel has to make a game theory reference. So, I mean, it's a good show. I, I like it. You know, I don't really care about Five Nights at Freddy's that much. Anyway, what do you think? Let me know and stick around because Anne Knuckles November still has a little ways to go. Toot toot, Knuckle Warriors.